appearance. Think about it. That's what some All-Stars did this week. I was seven years old when Kareem first entered the league. Kareem been here 17 times. I was in the third grade. You almost had to put all guys together to total 17 All-Stars. <laughs> <laughs> always talking about he was going to quit. This was his last year, and now it's the late 80s. <laughs> My man Silk is going to be in the all-timers game. That's, that's hard for me to take. He's, he graduated from UCLA five years after I did. As a certified living legend who is the grand old man of the game, when will he play in the legends game? People tell me I should play in it now. <laughs> I can play half the first half of the all-timers game and the second half of the all-star game. And when today's game is over, somebody will pick up this MVP trophy. It may or may not be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who's never won it. But Kareem, you are always most valuable to basketball fans across the land. Well, it won't be long now, the 38th annual All-Star Game. Strap yourselves in. Chicago Stadium is about to sizzle as the East takes on the West. Enjoy the game, everybody. Chicago Stadium, a standing room only crowd, probably will number around 20,000 for the continuation of one of the great celebrations in classics in professional basketball. And good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton, and we're glad you're with us on CBS Sports for another All Star game. It never fails to be a great show, and down the stretch, it never fails to be an outstanding game. And all the hoopla is passed. We're ready now to go down to business. And Billy Cunningham, you have coached and you have played in this game. Now, the thing is, the votes come in, the coaches name the rest of the squad. We have the hoopla. When does it hit you that you're in the All-Star It game? really hits you just before you have to walk out for introductions. All of a sudden, it hits you, wow, I'm one of the top 24 basketball players in the world. And it, you get a tingling sensation all over your body. We know of all the great stars. It's East versus West. Tell us about the contrast and the styles of a game we're going to see today. Well, the interesting thing is the East is perceived as the physical pounding of the boards type of conference, where today we're looking at the West with Elijah Wan and Carl Malone on the boards. You'd have to give them the edge with their starters of being the physical team. And you'd have to look at the East. They're a team that has great individual talents with Dominique Wilkins and Isaiah Thomas. If they can get to the open court, it'll be exciting. All right, you said the biggest moment is when they're introduced, and we're ready for that now. Right now, let's send it over to the public address announcer here at Chicago Stadium, Tommy Edwards. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1988 NBA Western Conference All-Stars. Selected by the Western Conference coaches, this first-time All-Star is unable to compete because of injury. From the Portland Trail Blazers, 6'10 center, Steve Johnson. Playing in a record 17th All-Star game, the leading scorer in NBA history, one of the sport's all-time greats from the Los Angeles Lakers, 7-2 center, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. An explosive scorer 
from Westinghouse High School and DePaul University, Chicago, making his third All-Star appearance from the Dallas Mavericks, 6'6 forward, Mark Aguirre. Also from the Dallas Mavericks, one of the NBA's top rebounders, appearing in his first All-Star game, 7'2 center, James Donaldson. Enjoying his finest pro season, an all-star for the second time. From the Portland Trailblazers, 6'7 guard, Clyde Drexler. <laughs> A first-time all-star, strong and quick, from the Seattle Supersonics. 6'8 forward, Xavier McDaniel. making his third All-Star appearance from the San Antonio Spurs, 6'4 guard, Alvin Robertson. <laughs> Dangerous to the low post or on the break, playing in his third All-Star game from the Los Angeles Lakers, 6'9 forward, James Worthy. Starting lineup for the Western Conference. At forward, making his seventh All-Star appearance, the standout veteran of the Denver Nuggets, 6'7", Alex English. <laughs> making his All-Star debut, the front court star of the Utah Jazz, the mailman, 6'9", Carl Malone. An all-star each of his four pro seasons from the Houston Rockets, seven-foot Akeem Olajuwon. <laughs> and Gar making his first all-star appearance, the versatile star of the Denver Nuggets, 6'3", Lafayette Fat Lieber. <laughs> and the NBA leader in assists, in his eighth All-Star game from the Los Angeles Lakers, 6'9", Urban Magic Johnson. <laughs> Trainer for the West Squad from the Sacramento Kings, Bill Jones. Assistant coaches from the Los Angeles Lakers, Bill Burka and Randy Fun, and the head coach of the Western team from the Los Angeles Lakers, Pat Riley. Conference All-Star. In his first All-Star game, having the best season of his pro career, from the Boston Celtics, 6'5 guard, Danny Ainge. He's among the NBA's most rugged and exciting performers, playing in his second All-Star game, from the Philadelphia 76ers, 6'6 forward, Charles Barkley. Also, from the Philadelphia 76ers, one of the NBA's premier playmakers, a steady veteran from Chicago, 6'1 guard, Maurice Cheeks. A versatile pivot man, making his all-star debut in only his second pro season. From the Cleveland Cavaliers, 7'1 center, Brad Doherty. <laughs> he missed the 1987 All-Star game because of injury. A top shot blocker from the New York Knicks, seven-foot center, Patrick Ewing. <laughs> An outstanding low post player who always presents matchup problems, a four-time All-Star from the Boston Celtics, 6'10 forward, Kevin McHale. to a division title last season. From Chicago, 6 far guard, Glenn Doc Rivers. And now, the starting lineup for the Eastern Conference. At forward, 
a three-time most valuable player, an all-star each of his nine seasons from the Boston Celtics, 6'9", Larry Bird. He's one of the NBA's most exciting players in his third all-star game from the Atlanta Hawks, 6'8", Dominique Wilkins. For the tenth time, one of the game's most rugged rebounders from the Washington Bullets, 6'10", Moses Malone. <laughs> At guard, number one player of the 1984 and 1986 All-Star Games, this Chicagoan is making his seventh All-Star appearance from the Detroit Pistons, 6'1", Isaiah Thomas. of his four seasons, the charismatic star of the Chicago Bulls, 6'6", Michael Jordan. <laughs> the winner for the East squad from the Chicago Bulls, Mark Mile. Assistant coaches from the Atlanta Hawks, Brendan Sir, Don Chaney, and Brian Hill, and the head coach of the Eastern Conference team from the Atlanta Hawks, Mike Fratello. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of our colors by the United States Army Color Guard, posted at Fort Sheridan. And now to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, Grammy Award winner, Al Jarreau. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we walked. Were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Then, oh, say. annual NBA All-Star Game is sponsored by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Converse, the first name in basketball, official shoe of the NBA. And by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. We're back in Chicago. About to begin, the East in the white, the West in the traveling red, and Bill Cunningham, how cool are these moments? I'll tell you how cool, Dick. I can remember coaching in an all-star game where the players, we had to call a timeout after two minutes because they were hyperventilating. <laughs> you know, they're, the nervous energy, the buildup, they're trying to prove to the fans and the coaches that selected them they're worthy of this honor. Two veteran officials are working the game, Daryl Garretson and Jake O'Donnell. O'Donnell, by the way, worked the previous all-star game here at Chicago Stadium back in 1973. Bill Oakes is the alternate. Underway. And Larry Bird makes the first steal. Oh. 
loops it in. And we may have had a problem with the clock as Jake O'Donnell goes over to the scorer's table. Who is he going to alley-oop to? <laughs> <laughs> Minute bowl, but he's not here. <laughs> I don't think Jordan couldn't have got, could have gotten that one. No. Hey. But a lot of the press corps could have. Do you think Minute could have gotten that one? Maybe. Maybe. They have, we also had a buzzer sound, so we have a stoppage of play. And there's Larry Bird, the three-port shooter. And he said, there's no question what he wants to do in this game. He says, I think our job is to get the ball to Michael Jordan and get him into the game and get the crowd into the game. Yeah, he just feels that it's it's Michael's hometown and he'd like to see Michael achieve that goal, the MVP. One thing that coaches have to do, and I think they'd emphasize before the game, is let's play very unselfishly because what we have out here are great scorers on the court. So they're going to have to play together and sacrifice a little bit on the court. Such a thing as being too unselfish? You might see that early in the game. And they go to the loop pass. It was short. Thomas going to Jordan. And here comes Matt Lieber. Snubbed a year ago. He's an all-star now. So already we have a lot of shooters, but we see a little defensive aggressiveness by the East. You know, right off the bat, Pat Riley asked the players yesterday, who would you like to match up against? And, and Magic Johnson said, I want to play Jordan. They double team and on the pick and roll. Carl Malone gets the first basket of the ball game. And you saw a very fine look at Carl Malone in our pregame show. Lever is on Isaiah Thomas. Jordan guarded by Magic. He got free and missed the shot. And here's a four on three for the Western Stars. English didn't have control and Jordan makes the block to Wilkins. Open court. He would have won the dunk contest with that one yesterday. Hakeem comes back, and we've got an exciting start to this one. Elijah Wan, the starting center. The load is all alone. And a block by Hakeem. He got a piece of the ball from behind. Great defensive play by Elijah Wan. And Malone scores. And if this pace continues, maybe we'll hit 200 or something. But we'll see substitutions very quickly at this pace, but this is the nervous energy that's being worked off by the players. West with the lead inside Wilkins, and the East All-Stars are getting free inside. Well, just good execution with their set offense. Lafayette Lever, Malone, outlets, and it's picked off by Akeem Olajuwon. And that's because they haven't been around to practice much. A little mix up there. Right, and out of sync. In one area that the coaches, they only have an hour's worth of practice time the day before well, yesterday, is they can't they work on their set plays offensively. They have no time to review a defensive philosophy. Isaiah Thomas. I'm surprised at the reaction Isaiah Thomas got there. He's a native Chicagoan, but you heard some boos by Chicago Bulls. Fans. Well, I think that stems because a couple of years ago in an All-Star game, people questioned, did Isaiah freeze out Michael Jordan? And I don't think the fans here in Chicago forgot. English, English. from Fat Lieber. And that's a story that simply has not gone away. Two and a half minutes elapsed in the first period. Now, we haven't seen Larry Bird get involved at all offensively for the East team. He's posting up against Carl Malone now. Thomas and a good switch. Malone is all over Isaiah Thomas. One second on the shot clock. Bird gets it off in time but misses. And here's another four on two break. And a foul called inside. Pat Riley said, look, if we ever have a problem, look for Lieber or English, the Denver players. They're always on the wing. Uh, look at this guy, Jordan, come up across and block the shot. You know, he's known as an offensive player, but right there shows you the defensive ability. Here's Lieber swinging the basketball, looking inside, fine pass to English. Lieber makes the free throw. So Fat Lever, who was snubbed a year ago and leads the NBA in triple doubles. That's points, rebounds, and assists. He is only 6'3 and is one of the top rebounding guards in the league, if not the best. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, y
minutes gone by. The West with the early margin. And a foul is called. The first foul called against the West Stars, and that'll be against Akeem Olajuwon. You know, you look at the matchup. There's Moses and Akeem. You know, Moses got Akeem started in this game of basketball. Worked with him down in Houston. Almost adopted him as a son. Michael Jordan from outside. They played in that gym down in Houston, Texas. Here is Malone. Here's Elijah Wan out of nowhere, and the basket counts, and a foul. Akeem Elijah Wan, by the way, was the third highest vote getter of all the All Stars. We know about Jordan and Magic Johnson, over a million. It was Elijah Wan who was third. And there's Elijah Wan beating Moses at his own game, getting to the offensive glass. Larry Bird picked up the foul, and Elijah Wan. Misses one, and the West lead is four. Thomas trying to go the distance, loses it. Moses Malone gets it back. And Isaiah Thomas, you'll see this fella, this 40-year-old fella soon, Kareem, as the ball is knocked out of bounds, controlled by the West. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, by the way, was in a, a hotel room. He had a bad throat. They didn't think he was going to play, but he says he will. As will James Worthy, who's been bothered by tendonitis of the knee, two Lakers. Carl Malone wearing Pete Maravich's number, as you heard. Oh, Thomas, no foul. Lieber comes out with it. Magic. No look pass to English. Crashing the boards is Elijah Wan. He is playing like a terror so far in this game. Well, we see that presence of the physical game from the West. Four on two. Right now, Mike Patel has, got, it has to be a little upset with uh, the East team because they're a little too cute out here with the basketball and handling it. And there's an example by Isaiah. He should have just pulled up and shot the open jump shot. Nearly a steal by Magic and Michael Jordan with four. So Thomas and Jordan and Wilkins each with four, and it's a 12-12 game. You know, during the game, the coaches will try and read this ball game and see which players complement complement each other to have them ready for the fourth period. Lieber hits from outside. The improved Denver Nuggets. What a comeback they've had this year, and they've got two starters on this team in English and Lieber. And Lieber's had to go to the two-guard position for the Denver Nuggets with the addition of Michael Adams. Jordan going baseline against Magic, and a foul is committed. You mentioned the story about the All-Star game a couple of years ago, Billy, and the story was during the slam dunk contest, Michael Jordan was real cool, and a lot of people thought that maybe he was cocky, and the feeling was he was frozen out in the game, and that story really hasn't gone away, although Isaiah Thomas, who was supposed to be part of that, denies it, and Jordan says, I never said it myself. Yeah, and you remember the stories that how Magic and Larry Bird didn't get along many years ago as players, and now their dear friends do commercials together. <laughs> A keen long range, and he's fouled with 6.45 remaining in the first period. An exciting start to this all-star game, and we're dead even. For your enjoyment, Warren Wigrass. First name in basketball. And with new cons, always will be. Converse, official shoe of the NBA. My old stopping grounds was there, everybody calls them. Bring back memories that uh, always be there. Memories that you remember no matter what happens. The fun memories, the hard memories, the uh, times when accidents have happened, such as this here, where your teeth are knocked out. We'd all jump over this fence first of all, shoot a couple baskets to start, and then it would end up in a flag football game. Then it'd end up in a tackle football game on the cement. And then we'd go back to the uh, to playing basketball once again. And uh, once the lights went out, we'd still be out there playing. And say about 10, 11 o'clock at night, here comes the police chasing us out. Well, it has to start somewhere for all of these players, and you'll get a few more glimpses. And Denver, an improved club. They've won four in a row. They're two games behind Dallas in the Midwest Division. And I think a big factor for that team, it was the trade bringing Michael Adams and Jay Vincent to the ball. Uh, just, uh, if they could straighten out that 
coach out there, Doug Moe, they'd have a pretty good situation in Denver. You know, that's the way coaches should really be, shouldn't they? I mean, they're loose like that. Oh, yeah, Doug's very loose. He's got an ulcer, he high blood. That, that, that he's doing. Here's Akeem Olajuwon, regarded as the best center in the league. And uh, I think the Rockets are a team on the move. Yeah, I spoke to Akeem before the game, and I said, Akeem, how do you assess the trade, bringing Joe B. Carroll and, um, and Floyd to the ball club? And he feels they'll be a much better basketball team. Even, he thinks they're better now, but they will even be better. So does Pat Riley. Larry Bird. And Jordan misses inside and almost had a shot. Bird has yet to score in this ball game. Here's Magic Johnson. Oh, a little trickery. Showtime. <laughs> Isaiah back three on two east and a foot block by Lever and they'll have a new 24 second clock. Is he having fun? Patrick Ewing and Doc Rivers. Now, now watch Jordan on this play right there going for this loose ball off the boards. <laughs> what an athlete. 6.20 remaining first period. And Doc Rivers is in the game, so is Patrick Ewing for the East All-Stars. So the first substitutions. Ball knocked away nearly, and Rivers is fouled going up. So a native Chicagoan, Glenn Doc Rivers, who plays for the coach Mike Fratello, is in the ball game. He said five years ago he sat in the same hotel here in Chicago and cried because he was not picked in the first round. So he's come full circle being an all-star well he used it as motivation and i think the players sitting at home that felt they deserved to be a playoff to be in the all-star game should do the same thing to prove the fans and the coaches are wrong not selecting them i think this will be a great boost to glenn rivers confidence because last year he struggled as we know during the course of the playoffs and knowing that to on today that he is one of the top 24 players in the world this has got to give mike fratello a great deal more of confidence in glenn rivers he misses the free throws, and Carl Malone clears. Patrick Ewing did not play a couple of years ago. He was injured. He's in there now. Jordan on Magic, and Bird helping. Off Malone's hands. Malone look pass from Magic to Elijah Wan, and Magic is just that so far in this game. And Akeem now with eight points. You know, one award... Larry Bird and Magic Johnson have won every conceivable award, but the one they both have now won is MVP in this All-Star game. Hakeem gets a piece of that one. And Alex English. Carl Malone locked inside by Dominique Wilkins. And they're going to say offensive interference against the West East Ball. Uh, Pat Riley told me he taught that pass yesterday to, to Magic. <laughs> All right, here's a... Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at age 40, the oldest All-Star in history. He breaks his own mark. This is his 17th game. No one else has been in more than 13. There were six players yesterday in the Legends game that are younger than a, than a king. <laughs> than most, uh, excuse me, than Abdul-Jabbar. Jordan with eight, Elijah on with eight are the game's high scorers. Five minutes remaining in the first. Offensive foul. Oh. And here they come. Danny Ainge, Charles Barkley, Kevin McHale. Alvin Robertson for the West. Danny Ainge. And for the West, Alvin Robertson, who was a starter the last two years, is in the ball game. So Mike Fratello with a wholesale change here. Well, one thing you want to do in the first half, coaching a game like this, is make sure everybody gets some minutes on the court. Rivers, wild shot, Malone clears. Mark McGuire has come in as well. He's filling the lane. Bounce pass, Malone from Magic. Doc Rivers. And it's knocked away, still East ball. So the East with Barkley, Ewing, McHale, Ainge, and Rivers. Now the thing about this, notice the backspin he puts on the pass so it will bounce properly for Malone to, to receive the pass. Danny Ainge missed the shot. Malone going for the loose ball. They are not playing this game so far like it's an exhibition. No, it, it, there's pride. That's why these players excel in what they're doing, being professional basketball players. If they didn't have the pride, they wouldn't be all-stars. Barkley, way off. There you go, Captain. There you go. And Ewing stepped on the line. 
Westfall. Billy, a lot of people think that in the beginning of the game, it's let's have a lot of fun, and when we get down to the end, it's crunch time. I think they're playing this game like it's crunch time now. Yeah, they, they'll play all 48 minutes as hard as they possibly can. Would have counted had it gone, and Magic Alan will go to the strike. Fourteen fouls against the East Stars, three against the West. Magic Johnson to check. The view from behind Mike Fratello and the Eastern bench. There's Fratello. Mike Fratello is only 5'6. He's a little man among giants, but he said he got a lot of confidence. His dad was an amateur boxer, and that helped him have the confidence to deal with the giants he deals with. I'm glad you mentioned that to me. I'll, I won't give him a hard time from now on. <laughs> West is led all the way. Aguirre with a good steal. Magic behind him alone and a foul. You know, if Magic plays 48 minutes, the West has a real good shot here. And Magic would have a real good shot of being MVP. It's a good thing Charles Barkley didn't get his hand in the way of that attempted dunk by Carl Malone. He would have lost a couple fingers. Barkley's foul, and here is Malone. calls his mother in Summerfield, Louisiana before every game. I asked him, what did she tell you today? Because she always says these are the numbers I think you should shoot for. 25 points, 11 rebounds. <laughs> well, he's right on course. Malone with eight points and four boards so far, and we have just under four minutes to go in this first period. Now, defensively, what the West is doing very well is doubling down. Ainge hits the shot. That's tough to do, isn't it, when you haven't worked on this? Yeah, it is, but so many, every team in the league does some form of doubling teaming anytime the ball goes into the goal post. Ewing corrals Magic's miss. Rivers changed hands, got the basket in the foul. Nifty play by Doc. You know, you see Glenn Rivers going to the basket. We have but four players from Chicago, Aguirre, Rivers, Cheeks, and Thomas, and they do all do one thing and try to do it, and that's go to the basket. And the reason for that is when you're a young kid growing up in a windy city and you're out on that schoolyard, you know, with that wind, you can't shoot the jump shots. So you must work at taking the ball as close to the basket as possible. Magic gets the breather for the first time. He has two points and five assists and has been on every break, and Clyde Drexler is in. So is Xavier McDaniel. There are a lot of interchangeable parts on Pat Riley's club. They can maybe force some mismatch problems, can't they? And that's what he'll try to do. Once they get everybody into the game and get them into the flow, he'll look to create those mismatches. Well, the East seems to have the stronger team on paper, but the West has led all the way. And with 321 remaining, we'll come back in a moment. The story after three rounds of the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am, Steve Jones with a three-stroke lead over Craig Stadler and Bernhard Longer. Mark Kalkovecki also in the hunt, and you'll see the final round on CBS Sports coming up after the game. They call him the X-Man, Xavier McDaniel, like Carl Malone, one of the new big stars in the NBA, and he has tortured the Lakers in games, and he said, well, if Pat Riley gives me a lot of time, maybe I'll take it easy on him. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever do that. <laughs> Bernie Bickerstaff hopes he never does it. Now the changes, though, Dick, because now the East becomes the more physical team inside. And you can see it right there as Ewing and McHale collapsed around Kareem. Ainge, three-point danger. Ewing, double team, put it up anyway. And knocked out of bounds, it'll be West Ball. So you're right, they've got Ewing, McHale, and Barkley. Those are three sturdy men up front and a smaller front line with Kareem, Mark Aguirre, and McDaniel the front court for the West. So the West has got to beat the East with quickness, try to get out to the open court. McDaniel with McHale right on him. Here's Charles, Sir Charles. Ewing and 
and an offensive foul called against the East. Kevin McHale, Kevin McHale called for it. His first. You know, Barkley is such a unique player. Here's a guy, he's under 6'5". He led this league last year in rebounding. Uh, he has such phenomenal quickness and strength. Uh, I've never seen a player with that, with those ingredients. Alvin Robertson with a quick move to the hoop. Rivers knocked it away. You go back, back there, shoot. Robertson made the team. A lot of people thought Dale Ellis should have made it, and he's the only member of the NBA top 10 scorers who are not here. Help, help, Kevin. Sky hook. Thank you very much. Wouldn't be the same without that. There's a guy who was in bed for two days with a strep throat. Comes out here. And again, you know, you hear the players mention pride, pride, pride. Well, he just epitomizes it. They go into McHale, double team quickly. Seven on the shot clock. Ainge goes for three. Ewing gets the rebound and draws the foul. So a look at Patrick Ewing of the New York Knicks, who's become a force as a shot blocker. Now here's that inside strength. Uh, you see Charles pushing a team. Now there's Ewing going to the offensive glass, and they, if they continue to do that, that will create a problem for Pat Riley, and he's going to have to get maybe Carl Malone back in the game. What about the Knicks? Are they a team on the rise, you think, somewhere? Absolutely. I think that now they have gained a lot of confidence playing in Madison Square Garden. Now they have to get some confidence through Rick Pitino that they can compete on the road. Under two minutes remaining in the first period, Mark McGuire with white shirts in his face misses. And there's Danny Ainge filling the lane behind the back to Ewing, and it's stripped away. I believe Robertson got a hand on it. And it was last touched by Jake O'Donnell, which means it's the East ball. <laughs> Come on, Jake, get out of the way. I'm sure someone said that. <laughs> Now we see the East trying to go inside to Charles Barkley. Alvin Robertson is called on the foul. Now on Mark Aguirre, they get Aguirre. There's Pat Riley. This is a sad weekend for Pat Riley. His brother Len passed away on Friday in Florida after a lengthy illness. Pat will miss the Lakers' next game. That's against Indiana on Tuesday. Len Riley was survived by his wife Katie and his daughter Kelly, and of course, we send our condolences as well. We'll be seeing Pat Riley next Sunday. Huh? Not a bad game. You know, two teams I think that have played against each other once in a while: the Celtics and Lakers. Aguirre missed the three. Ewing, pick it up. That's what Rick Pitino would have said to him. Pick it up and give it to the guard. There's Larry Bird, who did not score when he was in there early. Drexler with a screen from Kareem. And Patrick Ewing fought through the, through the screen and fouled Clyde Drexler. So Bird on the bench, and so is Irvin Johnson. Clyde Drexler shoots two. You know, Magic run, has his own all-star game in the summer. And he's running for two years now, and he gets the finest players in the league to go out there and play in L.A. And they've raised, he's raised nearly a million dollars for the United Negro College Fund. It's going to become a staple, and uh, it's really the best off-season All-Star game around. And everybody shows up for magic. Winding down to a minute to go in the first, Rivers. Doc Rivers with his second basket. Jordan leads the East with eight, and Carl Malone and... Elijah Wan have eight. The West by one, and Ewing. Finger roll doesn't go, and that would have given the East the first lead they've enjoyed. McDaniel couldn't handle it. Well, just a little too cute. Both teams handling the basketball. Robertson. Oh, wow, Robertson. And when you're in an all-star game, you're not familiar with each other. You don't know how each other's going to react in the open court situations. That's why you should keep it simple with your passing. Ainge. Barkley. And he's on the line. 
12 turnovers, and a lot of that is to expect it because they're playing the up-tempo game both sides. Up-tempo, and they're not as familiar with each other. You know, just playing once a year maybe in an All-Star game it takes years to really develop that chemistry. Danny Ames. Rivers top of the key, or top of the nearly the three-point line. And they're going to jump it with Xavier and Ames. I think the defense of this game has really been the story so far on both sides. They're doubling and they're all over the shooters. Well, there's a great deal of pride you know, because you have players out here that are considered offensive players. They want to prove that they can play all facets of the game. We see the West team. Anytime the ball goes inside, we see Charles Barkley trying to get cute and get in there for the jump ball. But we see that the, the West doubles down anytime that ball goes inside, trying to force the perimeter shot. And it's a violation by the East team, and so the West will take over to bring up to date. The West has Drexler and Alvin Robertson at guard, Aguirre, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Xavier McDaniel up front. Two seconds remain in this first period, and a foul. Both teams in the penalty, so a bad foul there will give chance to West to get two more. Drexler, two chances. Clyde Drexler is on the line, and, you know, he plays for a team that always is playing catch-up against the Lakers in that Pacific Division. And a team this year that has overcome so many injuries, starting out with Bowie being out for the year. Vandeweghe, he's being out, and Steve Johnson sitting on the bench, who was the All-Star center, voted to the All-Star team. He's out with a, the thumb, who we've just, which he just had operate on. What's happened is they have just been able to overcome this adversity by playing better team defense. Barkley misses at the buzzer. Well, here we are in Chicago, the East, the favorite team, but the West had a lead as much as eight. They lead at 32 to 27 after one of the third. America's game. It's fantastic. Insurance like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Chrysler Motors, we just want to be the best. And by McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Here on CBS Sports, Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham with the 38th annual All-Star Game from sold-out Chicago Stadium and then some, and an exciting first period. These are the Bruce Brothers, a popular Chicago tandem that entertains the crowd. Pretty good, Im pretty good imitations, Bill. Well, pretty good imitations, but we have the real thing out here on the court now. <laughs> yep. Michael Jordan is back in the ball game. Dominique Wilkins also there. The East has Larry Bird return. So it's Bird and Wilkins and Ewing up front with Jordan and Rivers at guard for the East. Same five in there for the West. And traveling called against the East. And so we have Alvin Robertson and Clyde Drexler. In guard, Xavier McDaniel and Kareem and Aguirre up front. You know, I look at Kareem and I realize I played with him in an All-Star game. I coached an All-Star game with him, and now I'm announcing oh, he's playing with <laughs> Clyde Drexler hits the shot. He's a phenomenon. Wilkins guarded by Xavier McDaniel. They look to isolate him for the moment. And Wilkins let's go, let's go. throws up a wild shot, two on one. Aguirre finds the X-Man. Good hustle in there by Ewing, but it's still the West ball and a couple of Lakers worthy and magic cheering on from the bench. Now, one of the problems you have coming into an All-Star game as an offensive player, and you're asked, okay, to blend in, is the offense from your team that you play on during the regular season is all geared around you, and all of a sudden it's around, you know, five people. Drexler, and Jordan has it knocked away for the moment. Banging bodies at midcourt. Doc Rivers is hit as he goes in and will go to the line. 
For an all-star game, we've had a lot of guys hit the deck so far. Here's Brad Doherty, who's one of those seven players in the all-star game for the first time, replacing Patrick Ewing. These are the players making their all-star debuts. James Donaldson, who is a replacement player for Steve Johnson, also will check in. And on the line is Doc Rivers. So a look at Brad Doherty of the Cleveland Cavaliers. He is the youngest player. Doherty is at age 22. There's Worthy and Donaldson for the West. Doherty at 22 is the youngest player. He was four years old when Kareem played in his first All-Star. Oh, that hurts. You know, if I was Kareem, I'd say that's really a low blow. Pull the belt. Yeah. Maybe so. <laughs> Six-point lead for the West. McDaniel. Rebound, Doherty. Rivers. Bird. Hasn't scored yet. Gets the pass back from Jordan. Way short. Alvin Robertson tries to thread the needle, but Bird is there. Three on one east. Hawkins. Good passing by Doc Rivers. He has been effective off the bench for the East. Well, right there, he passed to a teammate, someone he knows very well and what they can do in that situation. He's starting the run again, trailing by four. Michael Jordan. And here's McDaniel, four on two for the West. And a backcourt violation. Turns it over. Well, here's that best fast break you know who do you go defend against if you're Donaldson Jordan or Wilkins he made the wrong decision Magic Johnson returns to the game and Maurice Cheeks makes his first appearance Cheeks the veteran of the 76ers off the screen and Magic uh, Jordan and he's fouled and Clyde Drexler committing the foul oh Magic Back to do his stuff. He scored two points, but dished off five in his earlier stint. I, I grew up playing on, on dirt. My father put a rim up on our house and didn't have a backboard or net, just nailed a rim up there. And that's where I first started playing. The playground was uh, Henry Holmes. Sometimes we'll be out there to 12 o'clock at night sometimes and just be playing. And I used to play against a lot of the older kids. And my father used to have hot water waiting on me every night around 12 or 1. And I would just get in and have to get up for school at 6.30 in the morning the next morning. You know, everybody's dream doesn't come true, but mine's came true. That's a South Carolinian, McDaniel. And a North Carolinian is Brad Doherty, Cleveland Cavaliers. They said he was too soft when he was actually the number one in a trade, wasn't it? Right, and Philadelphia traded their number one pick, who turned out to be Brad Doherty for Roy Hinson, who now has been traded from Philly to uh, the New Jersey okay, Nets. Two, and to say he Michael was Short. soft coming out of college, uh, you know, was not, uh, it wasn't very good scouting, I think, on a lot of people to analyze Michael, uh, to, uh, analyze Brad Doherty in that fashion because when you look at the NBA right now, you think of Elijah Wan, Ewing, and Brad Doherty as the three centers in the league. That was Moses Malone with the ice. Michael Jordan has a game high of 10 points after those free throws. And the West lead is 2, 34-32. Cheeks is guarding Dressler. Drexler giving up a lot of inches there. But Daniel misses and tearing the ball away is Dominique. Doesn't have control. And James Worthy, who's bothered with tendonitis on the knee. McDaniel inside. Darty the rebound after nearly blocking it from behind. Bird still looking for his first points. <laughs> and a foul is called against the West. Now you'll see Dominique Wilkins just coming out of nowhere and jumping right over James Donaldson to get this defensive rebound. Oh, that's just great athletic ability. Larry Bird still cold. He was hot yesterday, though, for the 12,500, wasn't he? That's what he was after. Magic. And there's McDaniel. Tough 
defense inside. It's not easy when you get the ball inside, not automatic. No look pass, Doherty, goaltending call. And it was Michael Jordan who made the feed, a couple of former Tar Heels. Yeah, Michael Jordan, we got James Worthy, who played with Michael Jordan down there at Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and Brad Doherty, as you mentioned. And another guy who's sitting next to me. Uh, he, <laughs> don't put me in their class. <laughs> and a loose ball foul. Loose ball foul. Now Worthy coming. Darty did not see James Worthy coming out of the off the blind side. If he did, he, sh he probably would have tried to dunk it. Carl Malone back in the ball game for the West All Stars. You know, it's been very surprising how low the scoring is so far in this ball game. In most cases, it's a lot higher. Wilkins inside from Cheeks. And I think it's because of the defense, not so much because of teams missing shots, because they're trying a lot of shots, a lot of attempting. A lot good defense, and in, in a lot of cases, pretty poor ball handling. Out of bounds. The West East ball. on that basket by Wilkins took the lead for the first time in this game. The West had been in charge. And there is Fat Lever replacing Drexler for the West. Worthy trying to post up Wilkins, but Wilkins pushed him away from the hoop. Cheeks. Darty. Jordan. First it was Jordan to Darty, and now it goes the other way. And the East now up by four. And Jakes caught a foul inside against the Eastern All-Stars. Let me tell you, these officials are having a tough time keeping up with the tempo of this game. Now look at the passing. Oh, Brad Doherty right there shows you why he's the number one center passing-wise in the NBA. We haven't given you personal fouls. When they start to get into foul trouble, we'll let you know. But that's not the key numbers to give you here. Jordan staying with Magic Johnson. Worthy. It counts and the foul. A familiar move by James Worthy. And we see right there what James was doing is he was taking his time reading if there was going to be a double team. Was Jordan going to come down and double team? He didn't, so he took it strong to the middle. Jordan's foul his second and the only member of the East team, along with Rivers, to have two fouls. It converts the three point. Jordan setting a screen for Larry Bird. Against Lever. Wow. He's not being a very gracious host to this West <laughs> Ball Club. No. Isolating Worthy against Wilkins. And Doherty came around to help. <laughs> Bird. Can't save it. West Ball. Did you see Worthy trying to shoot the ball lying flat on his back? <laughs> now, here's that penetration and the movement of Michael Jordan. Look out, Watch out. Watch out. I don't know what you do to stop him. Lever buries one. That was a legitimate 360 by Michael Jordan on that replay. The East trailing most of this game until the last few minutes have a two-point lead. Just under seven minutes remaining in the half. Timeout. Everyone has played in this game. Bertello and Riley will find out which combinations will work as we go on. The Celtics and the Lakers from the Forum. Enough said at 3.30 Eastern time. Right now, let's go to James Brown in the crowd. JB? All right, Dick, this building has seen the likes of Jake LaMotta and Joe Lewis, of course, famous boxers, and now it's got Mike Tyson watching the action. And, Mike, they build this game as having the 24 greatest athletes. I think that list ought to be expanded to include 25. Well, you know, they're the greatest athletes as a team. But, you know, I do my thing on my own. Mike, any skills that you see these guys possess that you'd like to take into the ring with you? Not at all, because theoretically, and actually, if you look at it basically, it takes approximately the same amount of time to develop a good fighter as it does to develop a good basketball player, because they all have the, the time and the coordination, the agility, and the fighter needs exactly the same mold. But we know that you have everything. But we know that you have a stronger punch indeed. Talk about knockout power. Let's go back to Dick and Billy. And also in the audience, there's Oprah Winfrey enjoying the All-Star. Wilkins hits the first free throw. He has nine points. Jordan has 14. Those are the two main scorers for the East. More balance on the West where 
Malone and Elijah Wan have eight, and Pat Lieber and Drexler have six. Now we see that front line that was so effective for the West with Elijah Wan and Carl Malone. Pick and roll inside. They got it inside to Akeem Elijah Wan, who was a force early in the ball game, and he'll go to the line. Well, on that play, what Worthy did is he just curled around the screen set by Elijah Wan and realized that the way the defense, the defense played it, that Elijah Wan was wide open and found him for that, well, found him for the possible dunk, but he did get fouled. Clyde Drexler. He said, you know, well, the thing about the Lakers is that they've got, with all the great stars, they have Michael Thompson coming off the bench. He's just, and once upon a time, he was the nucleus of our team in Portland. That just tells you how strong the Lakers are. Darty inside, working against Malone. Yeah. Knocked away by Akeem, and Wilkins winds up beyond the photon. Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas coming back in the ball game for the East. Cheeks goes out, and Moses Malone will be checking in. Thomas back to the East. Halftime, we'll have a look at yesterday's exciting activities. Three-point shootout in the slam dunk contest. Magic's pass to Malone, thrown away, and Moses Malone back in the ball game. Interestingly, Billy, Moses Malone and Larry Bird are scoreless so far in this game. Uh, both players had the, the ability, though, to help their ball club in other ways. Bird by passing the ball and Moses on the board. Dominique Wilkins got inside, a foul against the West. And it's Akeem Elijahwan with his second personal foul. Dominique, two Fratello and Larry Bird and Fratello's main man on the line and Dominique Wilkins. And, of course, he is really the main scoring force of the Hawks. Well, he is, and what he's been able to develop, I think, more so this year than any year, is that leadership quality. You know, he, he has the ability to say, hey, let's go, guys, let's get down to work, and he's the one doing it defensively or on the boards, not just scoring. Lever, he's been maybe the most effective outside shooter in the ball game. He's got eight. The East leads by two, 44-42. 540 remaining. Michael Jordan knows the rims here, doesn't he? Knows the rims, and that's a tough matchup for Lever trying to contest Michael Jordan in the low post. And a steal by Jordan. He spun it away from the mailman. Jordan has 18 points. Malone misses, and the other Malone, Moses. Bird, as Larry Bird scores his first point of the game. I think the West needs a little timeout to reorganize. They're just not in sync. 20-second timeout. 20-second timeout, called by Riley. Now, this is something Doug Collins coaches the Chicago Bulls players to do, to try and come from the rear to block the shots of the bigger players. He leads the NBA in steals. Is there anything he can't do? Central Division. They have been the strong division, and you can see games over 500 really indicates it all. And right now, all six teams would be going to the playoffs in that division. And it's a topsy-turvy division. You know, you look at Atlanta, Detroit. You know, who's going to win that division? You know, a couple weeks ago, Cleveland was in last place. Now, you know, all these teams are really fighting for position as we go down go into the second half of the season and the chicago bulls let's not forget them they got off to that great start then they cooled off and now they're tied with the pistons three games behind atlanta and they released uh, you know artist gilmore and now are playing a much smaller team wilkins foul and it was jordan who shuffled the ball to wilkins and so the quickness of the East team is apparent right now. They've got a bunch of quick people in Jordan, Thomas, and Wilkins. And this is Larry Bird's four steal. Look at him coming from the weak side. You know what? He knew what Elijah Wan likes to do in that situation and just anticipated. He's such a smart basketball player out there, especially defensively. Michael Jordan goes to the bench with 18 points, the game high scorer. McHale is in along with. Danny Ainge. So there are two Celtics and make it uh, two. Yeah, the Larry Bird went out of the ball game. So there are two Celtics. 
in Agent McHale. Nice save by Carl Malone. Lever. Ames to Thomas. And he'll call the travel against Isaiah Thomas. Charles Barkley checks back in for Dominique Wilkins. Charles Barkley replaces Dominique Wilkins for the East Stars. Wilkins goes out with 13. The All-Star game is always a game of streaks. You know, as many times as you've done this game, uh, Dick, you know, there's 15-point runs, say, and then the other team will come back. Elijah Wan. Elijah Wan. And we've kind of had streaks, but no real big streaks. They've been mini streaks so far in this game. The East, though, with a seven-point lead. At one time, they were trailing by eight. Back up. Illegal, Illegal defense. defense called against the West. Carl Malone, first violation warning, new 24 seconds. Now watch Elijah Wan coming from the weak side, getting to the offensive boards. And if you don't have a body on him when the shot goes up, you're in trouble. Isaiah Thomas tries to loop it over the big men. And Moses Malone is there for his first basket of the game. And Larry Bird getting a breather. Bird has scored just two. But as you said, he's done other things, and the East is forged in front. But one thing in an all-star game like this, both coaches would like to have Larry Bird handling the ball as much as possible, and Magic Johnson on the West handling the ball as much as he can. Because they make the right decisions. West with Alex English and Lever, two nuggets. Magic Johnson, Carl Malone, and Akeem Olajuwon. So the five who started the game for the West are in there now. Not so for the East. Alex English. Alex English. You know, you look at Alex English. He's too skinny. He can't run very well. Doesn't jump. But he's been an all-star for, what, seven, for seven years now. Thomas came back with a bucket. Magic scoop. Doesn't happen. And Danny Ames draws the foul going in. And a chance to give the East an 11-point lead. The foul on There's a slew of Atlanta coaches. Uh, one of the things, Brendan Sir on the right, what he's trying to do is keep track in the first half of the minutes that every player is playing to make sure that they're fair and that they allow these All-Stars the opportunity to showcase their talents. Akeem Olajuwon has picked up his third personal foul, and that will bring in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So Olajuwon goes out having scored 12 points and the high score for the West. Danny Ainge, who went from a singles hitter with the Toronto Blue Jays to a three-point home run king in the NBA. He hit, he hit a three-pointer in 23 consecutive games this year. That's a record. Lever. Matt Lever. Matt Lever with 10. Isaiah against his friend Magic. Ainge. Good pass. To Moses Malone on a push inside. That's just beautiful basketball and just unselfish basketball by the East. And Danny Ainge, his first time in this great classic. There's always stress on one extra pass, and Danny Ainge makes it right there. Let's go back in the career of Danny Ainge. That's a Mormon church gym in Eugene, Oregon, yeah. the, the Santa Clara Ward. And, uh, you know, it rained every day in Eugene, so we had to find a place indoors. And my father was a bishop of the church and uh, had a key and had access to the gym. So that's where we spent a lot of time, my brothers and I and my friends, uh, playing ball. But there were a lot of dreams for me. I played with, uh, you know, my brothers who I idolized who were older than myself and were great players. And uh, I, a lot of dreams were formed there. That's where, I, that's where I grew up playing. I miss my hometown, Eugene. My family's all moved from there. And, uh, but I think about that little place where used to go in the rainy days. One of three Celtics in the game today. Right now, let's go up to Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Dick, thank you. You know, the fans who have come to Chicago for All-Star Weekend are indeed in basketball heaven. So coming up on the Prudential at the half, we'll relive the games surrounding the game, All-Star Saturday's events, the Legends Classic, the Long Distance Shootout, and it was an unbelievable slam dunk contest. I can't hype it any better. Unbelievable. And if you thought Frank Layden could only coach and tell jokes, you're wrong. Well, you can be the judge as Frank Chronicles All-Star Weekend for us. All that and a little more to familiar with the Prudential at the half. Back to you, Dick.
Thank you very much, Pat. And Moses Malone is on the line, and he's playing for a coach who has revived the Washington Bullets. Wes Unseld. He told me he says he's basically made us more aggressive, taking the challenge against the man against you. And whatever it's been, it's helped the Bullets. It has, and you, you know, when you make a lot of changes, as the Bullets did this year with Bernard King and making other trades. It, you never know how long it's going to take for a group to come together and get that develop that chemistry. He missed both free throws and now the West trying to come back in the game and Magic overthrew Kareem who wasn't tall enough. Yeah, Magic, Magic has been out of sync, you know, in, in this second period in his passing. Less than two and a half remaining in the first half. Inch. There's Barkley and English is on Barkley. He wants to be isolated against the thinner English. There it is. Barkley's relentlessness. English goes around Barkley the other way. And Kareem. Two minutes left in the half. Several chances for the West, and they still have the ball with two minutes remaining in the first half. The West Stars dominated early, had an eight-point lead, but the second period has been controlled by the East. They had a ten-point lead, and that's what they have now. Well, what happened is the East got in a groove, and they've Mike Fratello found a group, which we'll probably see more of in the second half, that played very well together. English goes in and a foul called and you heard uh, Jake O'Donnell even with the great stars having to uh, slap them on the wrist <laughs> yeah and Charles Barkley had something to say and uh, Jake you just can't allow players to get out of control no one like Charles you know he had a lot of things to say earlier in the year about his teammates uh, questioning them um, were they dogs or not uh, and he felt they were at one point in the season and uh, you know, Charles, I don't think needs those things, but sometimes he needs to think before he speaks. Kareem hits the shot. Barkley was fined $3,000. And that'll hurt. Eight-point lead east. McHale posting up against Kareem. He is the center on this team. Well, I guess Moses still is, but he'll post up like a center. Trying to cut it to six. Magic all the way in. Against McHale behind him. And Carl Malone now in double figures. Well, without Carl Malone, they'd be in serious trouble, the West, and be down, well, maybe 12, 14 points because he's just pounded the offensive glass and got out and run so well in the fast break breaking game. He's got seven rebounds, does Carl Malone. Ainge using a McHale screen. Now with a 58-52 game, the West trying to make a last spurt with under a minute to go. Kareem, Kareem cuts the lead to four. He looks like he wants to win that MVP trophy today. Never won one. Isaiah Thomas off the mark, and Magic will start it out. West has won two of the last three, but the East leads it overall. Ainge saves it to McHale, to Thomas. Good decision by Isaiah. He was outnumbered with uh, Lever and Jabbar back there defensively. McHale fouled with 21 seconds remaining in the first half. First time All-Star coach Mike Fratelli. 40 years old. What a phenomenal athlete in any sport. You know, the thing about him, he's always, every time it seems like we do a game, it's it's a new record he's establishing. You know, and the records like the scoring and the amount of games and the amount of years that he will participate in this sport no one will ever surpass it. Magic Johnson had the greatest quote I think about him. He said, of all the people I know, I respect Jabbar more than anyone because of the pride this man has in whatever he does. 20 seconds remaining in the first half. The East with a six-point lead and the West playing for that last shot. And it's last touched by the East, and 10 seconds remain. Look for Magic getting the basketball. Kareem with a long sky hook with six seconds to go. Charles Barkley all the way. No basket. He turned it over with one second to go. He wasn't going to pass to anyone. <laughs> 
Magic, Dollar. Ooh, that's the end of the first half with the score. The East All-Star 60, the West 54. Pat O'Brien will be back with the Prudential at the half after this message. So at the half, sponsored by the Prudential, going above and beyond to meet your needs in insurance and other financial services. Brian, welcome once again to the Prudential at the half, the all-star edition. And we're not going to waste any time here because I, for one, want to see yesterday's activities again. All-star Saturday has become an event with a slam dunk contest, a three-point shootout, and a visit from some legends. It was indeed Chicago's day, and the city reacquainted itself with some old friends. Former Bulls great Jerry Sloan, Storman Norman Van Leer, and Clifford Ray, that glory team of the 70s, reunited with Bob Love for the fifth annual Legends Classic. And from the 60s, the very first Bulls coach, Johnny Red Kerr. This is my home game and I'll have no technicals. No technicals, Red. <laughs> they hang me from the ceiling once here. I don't want you to do it again. You can come out all you want. The Legends may run the weave like they did back then, but back then, they were prepared for it. On this day, even the collision seemed at half speed. Some thought all this was hilarious. Some had other thoughts. How you doing, Jer? You look good. You look terrible, to tell the truth. To tell the truth, we did see some pretty good action. Check out 43-year-old Rick Barry's form as the West came back from 17 down. Then Clifford Ray a steal and a slam to put the East up by three. With 30 seconds left, Doug Collins and the West needed three, and yes, overtime. The first basket decides the winner. Dave Collins decides to repeat history. He was MVP here 15 years ago and starred again today. But it's just a lot of fun. He'd come up here and he'd just go after it and see who's in a little bit of shape. Party time. There you go. <laughs> the long distance shootout came down to Dale Ellis and defending champion Larry Bird. Ellis went first and Bird, who had been struggling, then got hot. It was out of Ellis's hands and into Larry's, who could win $12,500 by hitting his last three. Call this confidence. Call him the three-time champ. But today, it wasn't as hard. And the second round, I really got my rhythm. So the third round, I just took my time and, and tried to make some points. The way I look at it, you're dominating this event. Next thing for Larry Bird, slam dunk contest, maybe? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> then, what they all came to cheer, the slam dunk championship. Three former titleists clashed for the first time. Dominique Wilkins, the 85 winner. Spud Webb, the 86 champ. And the defender, and a bit favored around here, it's Michael Jordan. The judges, NBA legends, Randy Smith, Tommy Hawkins, Gail Goodrich, Jumpin' Johnny Green, and NFL Hall of Famer Gail Sayers. Round one with the human highlight film, adding one to his reel. But Michael Jordan wouldn't back down. Unfortunately for Spud, recent knee surgery left him off the mark. Two misses, and he was gone. So at the end of the first round, there were four. Golden State's Otis Smith proved flashy. Believe it or not, it wasn't enough. Clyde the Glide Drexler showed why, why he's Clyde the Glide. Still not enough. Not when there's Dominique. And not when there's Michael, who fired up Air Jordan. And then there were two, Michael and Dominique. Wilkins leads off with two perfect scores. Jordan also got a perfect 50, but followed it with a 47, and the locals were aghast. And you thought being a judge here was a picnic? Dominique with a final dunk. Impressive to the doctor, but only a 45 to the judges, 
and suddenly the momentum was with Michael. And he needed a 49 to win. Ladies and gentlemen, a perfect dunk. Dominique is second today, but he is second to the king on his home court. You like this event, right? Yeah, it's fun. It's creative. But I wouldn't say I dominated because I'm so tired right now from trying to think of something to do. And he would like to add maybe an MVP trophy. He has 18 points in the game. When we come back, a different look at All-Star Weekend from somebody who, well, he had the weekend off until we begged him to put on a reporter's hat. As at the half rolls on from Chicago Stadium after a message and a word from your local station. back inside Chicago Stadium sold out and then some in this old stadium the Madhouse on Madison after the all-star game today on CBS we're going to send you out to Pebble Beach on the shores of the week for the final round of the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am your leader right now is Bernard Langer he leads the pack by one stroke and our live final round coverage follows the all-star game you know there are so many things going on this weekend. This is the packet that the NBA hands out. It has page after page of events. So I confess, we needed some help. Somebody with a strong sense of journalism who is quick on his feet, who could ask the tough question, look you in the eye, and tell you what he knows. Frank Layden. <laughs> Welcome to Chicago. Oh, it's great to be here. How's the weather? Oh, cold. Cold. Cold, not compared to Utah, is it? It's like five below windshield, 40 below. Well, I think the thing we should do then is go have a hot dog. This is a work of art here, all right? This grill took years for them to get it like that. Even the mustard special, and they don't put it in little bags either. You really kill a dog and you have to open up the little package and put everything on. It doesn't get any better than this, right? When I arrived at the hotel and saw all the movers and shakers of the NBA, I felt like a kid in a candy store and I decided to recruit my own all-star team to take back to Utah. Hey, uh, John Lucas and Ralph Sampson, have you ever thought of playing for the Utah Jazz? What do you think? Give me a call in the call, you all right? Hey, give me a call at home, and let's keep it under our hat. All that recruiting can get a guy hungry. So I went for a bite and watched the little hoops in the meantime. Just a small snack. All right, waitress. Bring me cottage cheese. Next, it was party time. Three bands, 4,000 guests, bright lights, beautiful women, and lots of food for the real party animals. Yesterday was another feast. This one for basketball junkies. What an array of talent. Mikhail, Jordan, Ainge. If only they were mine. Hey, guys, well, I got you here quiet like. The second half of the season, if you're interested in playing with the Jazz, give me a call, all right? I'd love to have you. Sure thing. With the recruiting going well, I took my seat in the stands to watch the old timers and the long range shooting contest. The thing I like best of the whole day is the dunk contest. And of course, we need a team doctor. Julian, if you ever consider coming out of retirement, how about joining me with the Jazz? I think I've assembled a pretty good all-star team. But I may be sure to play or two. You gotta love him, baby. <laughs> Our thanks to Frank Layden, world-class coach, reporter, and a man who is known to pass up a meal once in 1955. But Frank, buddy, you missed one event. We're gonna take you out to the Brookfield Zoo. This is what they were doing this week. Dolphins playing basketball. He goes in for two. He gets the offensive rebound. Now he takes it back into the middle. Nobody's defending him, and he gets another two. He's a high score. We'll go back to real basketball now. Time for the second half of the 38th annual NBA All-Star Game. Dick and Billy are right around the corner. I'm Pat O'Brien. Thank you for joining us on the Prudential at the half. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. The Prudential. 
CBS Sports coverage of the 38th annual NBA All-Star Game is sponsored by Miller Lite, sponsor of the NBA All-Star voting program. The great All-Star weekend really started on Thursday night. Just Say No to Drugs program in 11 NBA cities, and the First Lady Nancy Reagan was in Indianapolis to talk to the crowd there. So to all of you, thank you for su your support. The kids for just saying no. Thank you. And Wayman Tisdale and Charles Barkley lifted the first lady up who was going to try an easiest basket you can and a little higher guys. Well, she missed the first, but she made the next two. And as we said there, and I had the pleasure to be there as the master of ceremonies at Market Square Arena, 67% is not bad by anyone's standards in the NBA. Uh, and neither is Michael Jordan's 8 for 11, although the overall shooting is not very good in the game. The West only 33%. What's keeping them alive, however, are the offensive rebounds. Akeem Olajuwon has four. The West has the big edge there. Neither team has waited till the fourth quarter to play for keeps as they usually do. They got down to business in a hurry. There you're looking at the high scores. Jordan and Wilkins scored 19 of the 23 when the East made their run. And the West starters, Elijah Wan, Malone, and Lieber. And Billy Cunningham, I think that the best combination for the West so far have been their starting team. Have been the starters. And the one thing I think adjustment or uh, that Pat Riley's going to have to make is to try and figure out how he's going to get some better shots in for his ball club. As you mentioned, it, they're shooting 33% from the field. That's not good for anyone, especially All-Stars. And in the East, we know that uh, Wilkins and Jordan have been tough and uh, will try to pick out the combination of five that we think these coaches will go to at the end. Uh, I think we'll see that combination that they like sometime in the middle of the fourth period when they'll go to their strength trying to win this ball game. All right, the same five who started the game for the East in there and a loop to Wilkins. Isaiah Thomas to Dominique Wilkins starts it off. And the East scoring early. So the same people who started for both sides are on the floor now. Lever and Magic for the West. Lever is fouled. Elijah Wan, Carl Malone, and Alex English up front, and English will shoot. Foul on Michael Jordan. That's his third. Midwest Division, we've talked a little bit about Denver. Dallas has lost four in a row and Houston two and a half behind. That's a terrific race next to the Central. That's the best race. And I can see this Houston Rocket Ball Club getting better and better as the season goes on. With the acquisition, as we talked about, with, with um, uh, J Joe B. Carroll joining this ball club and Floyd, you know, with a little time, they'll develop that chemistry and I think that they will give the Lakers a run for their money. Michael Jordan, by the way, has picked up his third personal foul. Lever made one out of English made one out of two. Isaiah Lever. Thomas. Isaiah Thomas coming back. And it's 64 to 55. Jordan. Lever in the lane gets the roll. So Lafayette Lever now with 13 points and the high scorer for the West. Well, right away, the last two plays for the West, we see English hitting Lever. Two teammates that know how each other's going to react uh, when the pass is made. Pat Riley said, look, if you guys are in trouble, just look for those people because they don't have any plays anyway when they play for the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> they run that passing game. Tough to play, too, those teams. Carl Malone gets the basket and the foul, and Carl Malone is going to be a force if the West is going to win this game. He'll have to be in there. Well, here's Larry Bird trying to overplay the passing lane and not allow Carl Malone to get that good position, but the key was that excellent pass by Lever to the open hand. Personal fouls on the West. Elijah Wan has three, the only player with three. Malone missed the free toss. Moses Malone knocked away with a still East ball. Larry Bird with two points in the ball game. And one assist has been a quiet first half for him. Jordan. 20 points for Jordan. They'll call it on Wilkins. In second, 13 foul. Tough defense by Isaiah Thomas now telling Lever, go in and shoot. 
Jordan doubles on Akeem. Off balance, Bird was in his way. Good defense by Bird. Five on two break. And Bird tried to save it, but he did it in the hands of English. Jordan with another steal, and it's four on nothing. <laughs> That's two assists in this game for Moses. That's above his season seasonal <laughs> average. <laughs> or maybe season total. I don't know. Nine-point lead for the Eastern Stars. We see the adjustment defensively that the East has made. They're looking to come back in and double team anytime time Akeem is ready to put the ball on the floor. Is this game going the way you thought with the isolation for the East and the West with the physical matchups? It has in that regard, but I thought that the, the players would have a better offensive day. Wilkins. Moses. And it was Magic Johnson who got a hand on the ball coming the other way. Oh, and the basket counts and a foul. Magic Johnson only his fourth point of the ball game. And a chance, though, if he makes the free throw, to cut the East lead to six. Did, did you notice, well, here we'll see Jordan Steele anticipating Carl Malone's pass. Now, where the mistake was is Carl Malone shouldn't have been putting the ball on the floor. He should have gotten it to Magic earlier. But that last play, Magic has the court awareness to even look back over his shoulder before he shoots the basketball. Lead is six. Lieber defending Jordan. What can you do? 22 for Michael Jordan now. The frustrating thing is Lieber played excellent defense. Elijah Wan misses Bird the rebound. Three on one now. Wilkins. Moses, the best offensive rebounder, plays patty cake and gets the basket. Well, right now, the East West has got to regroup. <laughs> That's one way to start. It sure is, because what's happening is the East has been able to get the ball off the defensive boards and outnumber in transition the, the West team. That was Carl Malone, who has 14 points. Off the screen, Larry Bird, and they'll call it on Carl. Great to see new players in the NBA make the All-Star team. People like Malone, Carl Malone, Xavier McDaniel. And Larry Bird is one of five players who have never missed an All-Star game in his career. Nine times, nine stars. And those seven players before the game, as all the other players do, what they do is they pass around programs and they collect the autographs. And they take that home and it's something they'll always cherish. I guess they're kids, huh? That's exact. Kids play, making a few bucks playing a man's game here. East has up the lead to 10, matching their biggest lead of the ball game. With eight and a half to play in the third, Lafayette Lieber, he's been the best outside shooter. It's been Lieber, Elijah Wan, and Carl Malone for just about all the scoring for the West Stars today. Bird goes for three. Malone keeps it alive. Michael Jordan. And Wilkins on the other end. Oh. 19 for Dominique. Magic. Where did it go? Crowd loves the dexterity here. Fake passes, no look passes. Double passes, you name it. <laughs> They're having fun out here. And they know the coach isn't going to yell at them for doing it. Three seconds on the shot clock. And they don't get it off in time, the 24-second violation. And there is James Jordan and the Mrs. Jordan. Michael's parents are here. Bill Russell yesterday said to James Jordan, your son is a better man than he is a basketball player. And that made James Jordan feel awfully warm inside. Well, you know, that, that had to, and it's a lot of credit to them as parents that they forced this young man to realize there is life besides basketball. You know what they think of his basketball skills, and Bill Russell wanted to pay that comment about Michael Jordan, the man, as Brad Doherty comes back in, and there is Bill Russell, who will be back next year as coach of Sacramento. Looks a little older, though, since he's got into <laughs> coaching. Well, you know what, what'll do that. 14 and 29. <laughs> Every time. Good pass. Carl 
Carl Malone. Alex Inglis. It into Alex Inglis. I'm impressed with Carl Malone. That's being a rookie playing in this ball game, Michael Jordan. It is truly exceptional because you're nervous. You just want to fit in and just enjoy the experience. Magic Johnson is enjoying this basket and a foul. Great passing by the West trying to come back in this ball game with 6.43 to go. In the third. And it's an eight-point game. Beneficiary, Alex English. En Volvo llevamos 60 años destruyendo nuestros carros. Mediante choques y pruebas de laboratorio. second all-star game the first one here was in 1973 the final score in that game bill was 104 to 84 in favor of the east i don't think we will see a low scoring game like that in fact that okay. was the lowest point total combined since 1954 all-star game so that was an unusual situation yes we will pass that probably by the end of the third period <laughs> johnson has the three-point situation and let's check the lineups Isaiah Thomas and Danny Ainge, the guards for the East. Wilkins, Bird, and Brad Doherty up front for the Eastern Stars. Carl Malone still in there with Elijah Wan. Magic with the ball. Lieber and Xavier McDaniel is in. Akeem stays in bounds. Oh, he's so strong. Uh, you, you know, I just sit here in amazement of what Magic Johnson has the ability to see on a basketball court. Uh, he sees the nine other players, it seems like, at all times. He plays at a different level. Wilkins misses. Doherty with the offensive rebound. Slapped away, and Lieber saves it. And you know, Magic always makes the right decision. It does, don't you get the feeling that Magic and Larry Bird are watching this game in slow motion? <laughs> That's a good description. <laughs> Xavier McDaniel, and it's now a 78-75 game with 5.45 remaining in the third period. So the West coming back. Magic sparking them. Wilkins, and they'll count the basket goaltending. Paul McKeskey. So there are players who admire their peers, and Paul McKeskey of the Bucks is one of them. The problem is the lights have gone out at, on the scoreboard, so that they're, they're trying to get that all squared away. Not with the numbers and the total, but that message area there. As long as the light is over the basket so the players can see the hoop. That's all they care about. Alvin Robertson and Doc Rivers getting set to come in for their respective teams. A team turned around and missed the pass from Magic Johnson. Those things will happen in a game like this. Five point eight lead for the East. Thomas, the only piston. Ames to his teammate, Larry Bird. Well, you saw how the defense was so concerned with Ames in that three-pointer, it allowed him to penetrate and then find Bird. Bird has six points on only two for nine shooting. McDaniel facing the hoop, double team. Good passing by the West, but Lieber can't connect. Good pass from Bird. Wilkins. Thomas behind the back to Dominique. What a play by both of them, particularly Isaiah Thomas. Isn't that beautiful? Magic 
Magic with a hook shot. Magic Johnson. You know, it's almost like, well, you guys think that was good? Watch this. They'll be talking about this this summer. Huh? Both of those guys. Yeah, comparing notes. 420 to go in the third. The East is a little out of sync with their set offense. Five on the shot clock, and Wilkins again with the basket. Two big baskets by Dominique Wilkins, and again, the East is up by nine. Magic will go and shoot a pair. And watch the ball movement here by the East. Isaiah Not finding Dominique going to the hoop. Makes it a lot of fun for everyone when they make that extra pass. Isaiah Thomas and Larry Bird are on the bench. McHale, Rivers, and Barkley have come in the ball game for the East Stars. Mark Aguirre has checked in for the West. He just got married last night, representing the Dallas Mavericks. You know, the other thing that's tough for these guys coming off the bench, they're used to starting. They're not used to sitting over there on the sidelines and now having to having to have to get themselves mentally prepared coming off the bench. So it's a new experience for a lot of these players. Danny Ainge misses. And it's going to be West Hall. And, you know, also to get warm in a hurry after you've been cold sitting there. The key is, though, you're not going to get warm. You have to have yourself mentally ready to come into the game, to get a feeling of the flow of the ball game, who you're going to be matched up against, what's going well for your team and what's not. Robertson and Drexler with McDaniel, Kareem, and Aguirre. They isolate Aguirre, then triple team him, and it worked, or did it. Rivers ahead to McHale, but he led him too much. Now, Xavier looks like a rookie in an all-star game. He's 0 for 8 now in this in, the, in this ball game. Well, one of the guys who went to the bench with Isaiah and Byrne was Dominique Wilkins, who has scored 12 points this period to keep the East in front. Regular season action resumes on CBS next Sunday. Despite injuries, the Trailblazers remain second to the Lakers in the Pacific, thanks in part or great part to Clyde Drexler. I much of a high school player. I developed late. I was a late grower. And as a result, I didn't think much about basketball until I got to maybe the 11th grade. I was busy watching Michigan State and Indiana with Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, the classic matchups, and I was just wishing that I'd be able to watch one of those games in person one day. I never thought I'd be playing with these guys. That's the first place I started to jam, and uh, those goals seemed like they were about 10 and a half feet. They were really high. So you really had to jump a little higher to jam, and uh, which made it even more fun. And uh, that's where it all began. Portland trying to chase the Lakers. The Lakers and the Celtics battle next Sunday, Bill, and earlier this year, the Lakers won in Boston. Yeah, and before that, we'll have the Daytona race down there in Daytona, Florida. But the thing about that game was watching Magic Johnson at the buzzer hit that fall away shot. I just hope we have a game like that Sunday. Why not? As the Celtics will try to do one to others, huh? Win in the forum. It's no such thing as a home court advantage with those two teams. Loose ball picked up by Danny Ainge, and he is pushed into the stanchion. And not lightly, I might add. Well, the one thing I'm sure Casey Jones, back in Boston watching this game, had to hold his breath watching Danny Ainge hit the floor. One thing you don't want to see happen in an All-Star game is someone getting hurt. McGuire picked up his third foul. If the West is going to make any run, now's the time because Wilkins and Jordan are on the bench and they have more than half of the East point total. Ainge for three. Bill mentioned earlier, set the record with 23 in a row and a bad pass. Turns it over back to the East. And the East, with a 10-point lead, can establish their biggest lead of the game if they score here. 2.42 remaining in the third period. Doc Rivers traveled, didn't have control of it. Cheeks and Malone, former teammates. 
he meets today. Doherty defending against Kareem. Loose ball foul. And a loose ball Alvin foul Robertson against first. Alvin Robertson. The West has three team fouls. The East in the penalty, and there's Magic, and the West will need Magic and Carl Malone in the fourth period to make another run here. I think they do, and this group out there is a very small group for the West. The tallest player besides Kareem is about six foot six, so they could get hurt inside. And that's where the East goes, and that's where Doherty hurts them. Brad Doherty. And it's 91-79, and the biggest lead of the game right now by the East as we wind down to two minutes to go in the third. But Mark McGuire comes right back at you. Two minutes left in the quarter. Doherty. Brad Doherty. Gets two. I like this Cleveland Cavalier team coming up with Doherty at center and a lot of good young players. Well, Mike Fratello does, too, because the last day... Cleveland beat the Boston Celtics to allow Mike Fratello to represent the East as the coach. He ought to send them a bunch of flowers or something. Well, he told Brad Darty, you can play as long as you would like and we'll run any play for you. Minute and a half to go. Now we've gone up and down a couple of times without a point, and it's going to be West Ball, commissioner of the NBA, and what a grand job he has done. David Stern. Players respect the work he's done. Aguire, air ball on a three attempt, and Drexler comes back. Yeah, I've watched Clyde Drexler. Here's a guy that last year, one area of his game that was questionable was shooting. He spent the summer with Kiki Vandeway in the gym working and perfecting his jump shot. And that's why he's an all-star. Complacency is not a word in their vocabulary. Danny Ainge has hit his second three-point shot of the ball game. And the East is up by 13. Under a minute to play. McGuire getting into the swing of things with his second basket. And Rivers is fouled. We saw David Stern a few moments ago, the commissioner. And as we take a look at this replay, we're going to look at inside rebounding here. But you know, yeah, Clyde Drexler just sneaks in and gets that offensive rebound. Larry Fleischer's done a terrific job. We covered the story of the labor negotiations and whatever you know machinations are going on now. I'm just confident that the intelligence of both parties will somehow solve the impasse that they have. No question. I think that both parties have the interest of the game. Number one is their number one concern. And there's never been a strike. And I think that every, they'll sit down and they'll resolve this and we'll, we won't have any interruptions in, in professional basketball. I got a lot of respect for the commissioner, the owners, the players, and their representatives. Well, the, right now, the great thing is it's a, it's a great situation. The players are doing well, the owners, the league. Everything is good right now in basketball, and you'd hate to see it interrupted. You know, there's Mike Fratello sitting over there. I think one thing they should do is they should rotate the coaches for the All-Star game because it's such a great thrill and honor to participate in this as a coach. You know, why not give everyone an opportunity? Let's not have it uh, the Pat Riley show, you know, every year of the West. And in most cases, it's been Casey Jones. Let the other guys get in here. Maybe maybe the home team, like here we are in Chicago. Let Doug Collins be the, uh, be the host for the East and then select someone from the West. Not a bad idea. Or at least, if it isn't the team that's in first place, if their coach went the year before, maybe go to the second place team. But it's such a situation where other people have an opportunity, because Mike Fratello's having a ball this week. Again, you know, these are things, not only do the players think this is such a great deal, but the coaches do. To have the opportunity to sit there, instead of preparing against Larry Bird, you're trying to run plays for Larry Bird. Drexler guarding Rivers. Brad Darty hits with 13 seconds to go. 99-87, a 12-point lead. McGuire draws the foul inside. If you joined us late, the West had the lead in the first half. They were up by eight points at one time. And it wasn't until late in the second period that the East took the lead for the first time. But they were sparked by Jordan and Wilkins. They went on a tear and have maintained the lead. As much as 13, Aguirre will try to knock it down now to 10. Ball is in play. I got it, Jake. Aguirre has a new wife, a new attitude. 
self-examination during the offseason and newfound respect, I think. Yeah, and, and the, the Dallas Mavericks have been struggling the last week, 10 days of the season. But I saw John McLeod, he just said, hey, you know, we're a little tired, a little drained, and there's something to be expected during the course of this long season. Five seconds, and the West playing tough defense and traveling against Barkley with two seconds remaining in this period. Mark, Mark, backcourt, fly, you can throw it back. Fly. Yo, who's Fire will there? inbound to try to cut the lead to eight. That's Kareem's spot, the three-pointer. Oh, almost made it. And it was hit off. The, they're going to count the basket. The basket will count, and it will be a three-point shot. And Kareem breaks the record. The most points in all-star history. A three-point shot here. What a way to do it. It counts, and that's the end of the third period. What a play. What the score. The East 99, the West 91. They gave them just two. And we'll return to Chicago after this word from your local station. Thank you, we're the four guys standing around singing. Ladies and gentlemen, attention all NBA guests. And welcome back to CBS Sports coverage of the 38th annual NBA All-Star Game from Chicago Stadium in Chicago. A few moments ago, Kareem was elated but they've taken away that last basket for a good reason. A very good reason. What happened is after Jake, o Jake O'Donnell called it in, um, interference, basket interference, then he conferred with, uh, with the other official and realized that it was McDaniel, who's on the same team, uh, that was involved with that interference. Offensive interference, and so the basket is nullified, so Kareem's next bucket will give him the all-time all-star. Clyde Drexler on the follow-up. And it's 99-91. And that's what you thought it was after three, and that's what it is right now. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham, the final 12 minutes of this 38th All-Star game, barring OT. Brad Doherty, defended by Aguirre, has good in and worthy in the ball game. Double team foul. Very interesting looking at the East front line. You have Brad Doherty. Charles Barkley and Moses Malone. Do you realize they very easily could be teammates today in Philadelphia? Yes. And Harold Katz, of course, may be thinking the same thing right now, the owner of the Sixers. I'm sure he'll call me about it, too. <laughs> they traded Moses Malone. They traded away the number one pick that became Darty. And Barkley, of course, is on the 76ers. How, how true that would be. Hmm. Doc Rivers with the free throws, and it's 101-90. Now, for the, for the West, with this small lineup they have in there, they're going to have to do it with their quickness. They're going to have to be aggressive, create some turnovers, get out and run. Turnover, Drexler lost the ball. Alvin Robertson in the backcourt defending. Wire, Worthy, and Donaldson are the three frontcourt men for the West. Doherty with a sky hook of his own. He's got 10 points off the bench. Another good-looking first-year All-Star playing well today. Yeah, he and Carl Malone are just playing, playing like they've been here for the last seven years. Alvin Robertson. Donaldson. The foul. James Donaldson. James Donaldson is the only lefty in this game. A vanishing breed. I don't know. You know, Larry Bird and Danny Ainge, right left-handed. And there are, he's the only left-handed shooter in the ball game. Now, I know Bill Russell was a great, great left-handed shooter. Can you think of any others? You amaze me, the homework you do for these games. Wow. What about you, Bill? You're a lefty kid. You're a southpaw. That's why I'm sitting with you. <laughs> Donaldson replaced Steve Johnson. It's unusual to have just one left-hander in a game like this. Here's Johnson. Early here in the final period, 103 to 93. Ainge around the screen. Akeem, the rebound and a foul by Barkley. 
And Charles Barkley just doesn't appear that he has his head in this ball game for whatever reason. Darty defending against Elijah Wong with a long oh. shot and a foul by Brad. Brad Rolando Blackman last year, remember the look on his face when he hit those key free throws down the stretch to send the game in overtime. Larry Bird has had an unusual game for him, just six points. And Elijah Wong is on the line. The only player on either side who has not scored in the game is Maurice Cheeks. Well, Maurice Cheeks went to Mike Fratello and said, you know, I'm not feeling well. I got a bad shoulder, and I'd just like to make an appearance, and uh, that'd be more than enough for me. And, and that's why we won't see Maurice Cheeks any longer tonight. Today, nine-point lead for the East, and they have the ball. And again, the West has got to get themselves going defensively and get to the open court. And we know what Magic can do there. Brad Doherty with a great spin move baseline. And you know the East is maintaining the lead without Jordan and Wilkins. Magic gets another opportunity and he loses it. And Jordan's going to come back in the ball game. He's at the scorer's table. Ames. That's his third three-point bomb of the ball game. I think Larry Bird was more excited seeing Ames hit that than, than Danny Ames. James Worthy. And the West is just having trouble shooting. And Jordan will come back in the ball game. He already has 24. The East has the lead when Billy and I come back to Chicago Stadium. Playing in the in the gym up at uh, PS52. Um, I used to sneak in there earlier in the morning, but um, that got to be too long of a walk, and uh, the big kids used to chase us out of there. So I used to go to go to the outdoor park when it, um, when it was warm enough. And then after a while, we, we were out there year-round. That's just as I remember it, too, with ice on the court and uh, a lot of noise. <laughs> we used to have great games out there, especially when the girls were around. Everybody played harder. <laughs> he still needs two points to establish the all-time All-Star scoring mark, and I'm sure he'll get it. 17 All-Star games. Don't you get something out of all these pieces being done, which are beautiful about the players, is that you have to sacrifice something to get to where they are today. You know, being in the gym till midnight and all the hard work that goes into this to become these great players. 14-point lead for the East Stars. Kick ball and a new clock. Worthy. And Magic, two Lakers in there. Magic off balance. Didn't get the foul or any of the iron. Doc Rivers fouled as he goes to the hoop. Billy, at this point, we're getting down, of course, to the crunch of the game in the fourth period. And what everyone looks forward to, the most valuable player award. This is the group of the last seven. Isaiah Thomas won in 84 and 86 and three times a charm. This would be his year. But right now, Isaiah Thomas has scored only eight points and would not be a candidate for it. We know the obvious right now. Right. You know, and if you, you look at the East, who's winning this game right now by 14, you'd have to say it's either uh, Michael Jordan or Dominique Wilkins. And if Larry Bird has anything to do with it, he says he'd like to see Michael Jordan win it. That would be poetic justice on this kind of weekend. Drexler and the basket counts. Great play by Drexler, and they credit the basket to Elijah Wan, who has 17 to lead the West Stars. As far as the West MVP, they come back, it could be anybody. Jordan has a shot blocked by Donaldson. Drexler foul inside. At the conclusion of the game, Billy Cunningham and I will select the Miller Light player of the game, and in conjunction with the award, Light Beer will present a check in the amount of $5,000 in the player's name to the Thurgood Marshall Black Education Fund. Brad Doherty goes out having scored 12 and looking mighty good out there, replaced by Patrick Ewing. 
You know, these two coaches, Pat Riley and Mike Patella, would love to have the options they have as coaches for the All-Star game. You know, they can go with a small lineup, a big lineup, quickness, strength. And right now we see both teams are going to a big lineup up front. 8.45 remaining, fourth period. Malone double team. It looks like Drexler, who takes the ball away from Jordan, cut off the baseline and made a good move. Now, right now, Michael Jordan or any player out there in the court that thinks he has a chance for the MVP has got to be very cautious that he doesn't try to force some things. Isn't that something? So Michael Jordan had the ball taken away, and he missed the stuff shot. Well, he didn't know where he was on the court when he received the pass from Bird, and all of a sudden he looked up, and there he was underneath the basket. So the last three times Jordan has handled the ball, it's either been a turnover or a miss shot. Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas is in now. Now here's that pass going to Michael Jordan, and he looks behind him. Well, he didn't know where he was. He just, the ball slipped out of his hands. Wilkins will be coming back to Magic. This is a three, and Bird has the rebound. Hey, hey, hey. Isaiah Thomas, two-time MVP. To Bird, to Malone. And Malone will go to the line and shoot, so the strength of the East team becoming apparent here. Carl Malone comes back in the game for the West. Anytime the West has made any kind of a run, including that first half lead, Malone has been the spearhead. Donaldson leads. And the West has plenty of time to get back in this ball game. Even if Moses Malone hits these two foul shots, they're down 13 points. And, and in a game like this where it's up and down and a lot of pressure, a couple missed shots and bam, there you are, right back in the ball game. There's Lever, and of course these games can change complexion in a hurry, but Pat Riley now wants the right combination now. Both, both coaches want that right combination. Worthy. So Worthy and Magic, two Lakers with Carl Malone, who has played well, and Elijah Wan, and Lever. This is the best five, I think, that the West team has had. Well, those are the decisions the coach makes during the course of the game. Ewing almost made a circus play, and then Moses Malone, the ultimate offensive rebounder, gets fouled. That's Moses' trademark. Get to the offensive class, and he always believes that he could wear down the opposition in that fourth period if he does it all throughout the game. Carl Malone has four personal fouls. We'll watch that. Michael Jordan has four for the East. Twelve-point lead for the Eastern Stars. 7-20, as you see remaining. Timeout story, plenty of them. Worthy off the screen. I think Ewing wanted that rebound. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas, inside, no white jerseys there. Magic to Carlo, resounding play by the mailman on a great pass. Uh, there's an example, if you're a, a lead guard at any level, the first thing you do when you get the pass is you have to Time look out. up, see if there's anybody at the other end open. Timeout called by Mike Fratello. Carl Malone has 16, Elijah Wong leads with 17, and what a thundering play this one. Every year the department takes younger looking officers, teach them how to be teenagers again. Then we send them out to various high Future, what do you think will happen along those lines? Well, I know the commissioner is in favor of this, the um, rules committee also, and I think they will recommend this to the Board of Governors, and I believe, uh, speaking to the commissioner, that uh, this will become a reality next year in the NBA, and it's a big plus. Dominique Wilkins hits the shot. you think the more fouls will be called as a result? No, it might limit fouls because that third official, the players will be aware of it, and they might not try certain things that uh, they've tried in the past. There's the alley -oop again, and Akeem Olajuwon, so the, the lob has worked two times for the West. We'll see that next week with, with uh, uh, Magic throwing that to Kareem. And now the East turns the ball over. Magic, by the way, with 12 assists in the game. Oh, you're kidding me. Carl Malone is fouled. Larry Bird is 
fourth. Now here's Magic making that lob pass right there to Elijah Wan. Now the reason oh, that was so successful go. though is that Pat Riley was able to review that in at in in the timeout and set that play up. Carl Malone with an outstanding game for the West All-Stars. Can cut the lead now to eight with 6.09 remaining. And that's what he does, 114 to 106. Thomas and Jordan, the starting tandem back out there now. Lieber is all over Michael Jordan, picked up by Carl Malone on the switch, and Jordan gets the basket. He was going to get to that basket one way or another. Magic. Foul driving in inside the paint. Uh, he just picks his way through this. One, two, three, four, and there's the fifth red shirt. Somehow he sneaks through there and is able to knock it in. Good roll with the rim. Like a minefield in there. <laughs> That's exactly what it looked like. Magic Johnson checks the clock. He has 5.46 to go. Speaking of next week, we'll see Ainge and McHale. And Larry Bird is on the floor against the Lakers. Lakers Celtics, 3.30 Sunday Eastern Time, starting it out the Great Daytona 500 at noon on CBS Sports. Push as Jordan got the pass from Bird and was pushed. Well, we see what Larry Bird said, that he's going to look for Michael Jordan because he feels it's appropriate, this is Michael's hometown, that he should be MVP. The last time down, he was the one that set the screen to allow Jordan to go to the basket. This time, that ball's in Bird's hand. He looks for Jordan going back door for the layup. Looks like Larry Bird and Magic are both taking over the mantle of Julius Irving as ambassadors of this game. Well, they, you can't think of, I can't think of anybody that has done a better job representing basketball than Julius Irving, so it's a great one for them to follow in the footsteps of. Ten-point lead for the East. Lever. Jordan, showtime. Oh! It was Ewing that got the ball to him. Malone, blocked by Ewing. Dominique with Jordan. And Magic comes back. <laughs> and they go back the other way. Crowd loving every minute of it. Traveling called against Magic, but the crowd enjoys it, and so do the players. He can't believe it. He said, I walked? No way. Ten-point lead for the East, 120 to 110. Jordan follows up Isaiah. Timeout, West. renewal a festival of unparalleled athletic sacrifice by those in pursuit of Olympic glory an event of such international significance it stands as inspiration to the millions who witness it this renewal and the international spirit it represents will soon be focused in Calgary
I told Fox, no one's gonna go for a werewolf running around without his clothes on. like a lead blocker there in football and now watch Patrick Ewing going up off the glass getting the rebound and making that outlet pass to Jordan that's the Patrick Ewing everyone expected to see in New York when he came out of Georgetown and he, they're getting it now and that's the kind of action that Patrick Ewing hopes to give the Knicks teaming with Mark Jackson he said I never thought that we would have such great communication that fast but it's worked for those two with the Knicks Michael Jordan has scored eight points in the last minute and a half. He has 32 in the game and now nearly made another steal. English scores with nearly four minutes remaining. Pat Riley will try to pull something out here with his team down by 10. Wilkins posting up against English. Knocked away East possession. Seven seconds left on the 24-second clock. So they'll have to get it in and get a quick shot. <laughs> Wilkins off the screen, wide open. 29 for Wilkins. Jordan has 32. They went head-to-head -head for the slam dunk title, and it looks like they're doing the same for the MVP award today. Akeem a little too hard off the glass. Steal by Able to handle it is Elijah Wan, and the chances of a West comeback are slipping away. Oh. Ewing from Thomas. The lead is 14. Alone now with 20 in the game, trailing Elijah Wan, the West leader with 21. Now his bird looking for, he was trying to direct Jordan to receive a pass. A great pass from Isaiah Thomas, couldn't do it off the glass. Malone on the wing, tipped away by the East. 2.48 on the clock, and Mike Fratello will try to go 1 0 as an all star coach. There's a great pass to Ewing. Magic for three. <laughs> you don't see that in a regular game. You think Chuck Daly wouldn't be up off the bench in Detroit if he saw one of those? He'd mess his hair up. <laughs> Elijah on fighting. Lever with 2.18 remaining. Now what the East has to do is have good patience offensively, use a little bit of the clock, and they'll just do the exact opposite as the Knights have said. <laughs> West needs a lot of points in a hurry. Carl Malone, now the leading scorer for the West with 22. Timeout called by Mike Fratello. The East leads the series 24 to 13 and in front with two minutes to go. Quite cool time. Huh? There is an auto race next Sunday, the Daytona 500 beginning at noon. We'll have race cam and we'll have all the excitement of what has been one of the festive, outstanding, thrilling sporting events you'll see anywhere. The excitement at Bill Elliott. Waving the Daytona 500 followed by the great game between the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers and they are on a run to meet again for the NBA championship and Danny Ainge is having fun today at the All-Star And look at Isaiah bouncing this ball he anticipated Dominique getting there but it's just a little too high 153 on the clock Michael Jordan gets the basket 
He's got 34 points and has just about had that seal on the MVP award here. So it's been a pretty good weekend for Michael Jordan. Magic's basket, good. And a foul as well with 1.43 to go, and the lead is 10. Now call Michael Jordan his fifth. The Laker Brain Trust, Randy Fun to the right, and Bill Burtka, and Pat Riley sitting down. A three-point play, and it's a nine-point game. Now, that last timeout was called by Mike Fratello because he was just a little upset how quickly they were shooting the basketball, not using any of that 24-second clock. English guarding Wilkins. Aguirre gets the rebound, and they can cut it to seven, but a loose ball, and Jordan winds up with it. Ewing. And that may do it. Even if he missed, that was a great play. <laughs> no look pass, Wilkins. 11 point lead. What a show both teams are putting on today. That was his wedding present to Mark McGuire. You know, when these guys go back to their teams, first thing that their teammates are going to say, well, what was it like playing with uh, Magic Johnson? What was it like playing with Isaiah Thomas? And they're just. It's going to be a real thrill for these Bob guys Hall to express Hall. it to their teammates as well. Now there's that pass by Jordan. Everybody's got that Michael look Jordan. away pass today. And the other end. Magic with 14 assists today. But Michael Jordan is the man of the hour. And they want Kareem to go back in and get the all-star record. He needs two points. Carl Malone goes out. It's got to make Kareem feel good. You know, the fans know he needs two points. And to see that type of support. Timeout. And a timeout called by the West with 52 seconds to go. It will be a moment of glory. A tribute to the realization. You know, what if he has an unfortunate injury, doesn't play? Let him get the points now and establish the all-star mark. And that's the reason he's missed two all-star games. He did injure his hand one year in Milwaukee. So Pat Riley wants to make sure this is it. And I would expect Ewing to let him get it. All right. Isn't that great? Smile on the face of Pat Riley. And Kareem sets the all-star scoring mark. Jordan, 38 points. Aguirre for three. I have never seen an all-star game that had such spectacular passing and plays and thundering plays like this from beginning to end, Billy. Oh, what a way to end this ball game. It's been so much fun for us just sitting here watching these guys do these great, great creative things on the court. 40 points for Michael Jordan. Here it is again. Don't have to say a word about this. Just look at this. Uh. Aguirre was fouled at the other end. Michael Jordan has tied the all-star record, or is two behind the all-star record, a 42 set by Will Chamberlain. He's got 40. You know the great thing is how Michael's teammates have tried to find him to get him the basketball as Isaiah did that last time. And there's another example. They wanted him to tie that record. Bird was just trying to throw him the ball. Will Chamberlain had a 42. Michael Jordan will be satisfied, I'm sure, with 40. English basket counts. The All-Star game is history. Who will be the MVP? And... Uh.